Exclamation, everybody, and welcome uh, to Scald Against the Black Prairie, the prologue. Uh, it is by Skeepit AS and published by Raw Fury, uh, a well-known publisher. And uh, it's slated for some sort of release this year. Uh, this obviously is a prologue, so it's a free demo you can play. Uh, the main game is, uh, you know, basically what you see on your screen, Scald against against the Black Prairie. Um, which you can also follow and wishlist and all that stuff on Steam if you so desire. Uh, as you can probably guess, it is very retro. Um, retro graphics. Uh, I, I wouldn't even call it... I wouldn't even call it pixel art. I would just call it retro graphics, basically. Um, which is, is fine and well. Um, I think the only problem I've had with the game thus far is the font when we get inside the game uh, is pretty terrible uh, as far as being able to actually read it uh, and you'll see as we go here there is a lot of reading uh, there's no voice acting or anything like that this is definitely going retro on us um, and it's top down RPG uh, with some interesting uh, I, it, it is tactile well, it's it's uh, it's kind of a hybrid. It's it's like it's not action, but it's a it's a tactical RPG sort of kind of. It's more like um, the kind of combat that you would find in an old school rogue like, um, where you just kind of walk up to something and as you hit up on your keyboard, you attack kind of thing with whatever your currently equipped stuff is. You'll see as we get into it, it's, uh, but it, it also brings into like cover mechanics and you can uh, surprise enemies and, and stuff like that. There's a uh, visibility that comes into play, you know, um, you can be hidden in shadows and stuff like that. So it definitely brings new mechanics to the, to the uh, uh, table. Um, but, uh, let's, let's pop in. We'll see what we can do. Um, I will, we'll create a character before I, um, just show you what the character creation is before we actually go and put the timer on because it's one of those games where it's, it's kind of a slow start cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of text. So I might give it like a 45 minute instead of a 30 minute one. But anyway, here's your character creation stuff. You got a cleric. Um, they are putting a note here that most of the feats and spells and stuff are not fully implemented. So, you know, choose what you want here. You got your cl your cleric. You got your magios, which is I guess your magi class. Uh, you got the rogue, and your core attributes agility, and uh, and then you got warrior, where your core attributes strength. I think this one's intellect, and the cleric is presence. They all have different uh, four attributes. I'll take rogue because I kind of like. Um, I, I was playing it a little bit uh, earlier on, so I have a, a feel for how the game was. And playing a rogue, and I kind of liked it. So we will select that, and you get twenty-five points to distribute. And I think uh, the rogue was. What was the rogue? Um, rogue was agility, right? Okay. So we're going to pump up our agility quite a bit. Uh, let's do that. And then we'll get uh, some diplomacy here. Get some intellect. Fortitude will need a little bit of. And strength would help. We'll pump the rest of that into strength. There we go. Alright, we'll continue. And uh, I'm just going to keep what's here. You can change your skin color and stuff. It affects the little character over here. And then you can change your portrait as well. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. And we'll name our guy Memory. And we'll venture forth. 
On the dark, raging seas of the Outer Isles, a lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves. The moan of creaking timbers, a tang of preserved fish. Your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the dimly lit ship's hold. Uh, skip in the intro. About to skip the intro and go straight to the mainland. This is the playtesting. Oh, this is for playtesting only and is not the intended experience. Um. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's do the intro because it, it does. There's parts of the intro that I'm gonna kind of skip because I want to show you the main game. In fact, let me get the. Uh, we're gonna do 30 minutes, but I'll probably go a little bit longer than that. I, I kind of want to get to the main game so you can see what's going on. Um, so let's just go through this. Uh, suddenly something strikes the hull and the ship rocks violently. Your heart begins to pound and a feeling of unease grows in your stomach. Rise well rested and ready to go. Your feet and become aware of the agitated voices shouting up on deck. Something is not right. You should make your way up top and get a bearing on the situation. Be on your way. Alright. Game saved. So, uh, we can look around here. There's a chest here. We'll take that and we'll get all the stuff in it. And then E is inventory in this game. Uh, and we'll do right click on right click on these things to and there that is that and that is our gold. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's the door. To your surprise, you realize that this door has been locked from the outside. It doesn't budge. Perhaps you could slip the lock with a thin blade. Uh, I have my dagger, so... Use a dagger. Flip the dagger through the gap of the door and lift the bar that was locking you in. The, the door begins to creak open. You gain 100 XP. The door swings open. You can now clearly make out cries from the deck above. You should make haste. There's like a question mark here. And it says, now here's the important thing. There's a lot of stuff that actually shows up down here that will tell you whether or not you're, you've got hostiles and stuff coming. So it's like, hostiles have not spotted the party yet. Plus zero bonus to stealth. And then plus 15 bonus to stealth here. If I can get in like really... Oops. Well, I was going to say, if I could get in really close, I could take them on. But now we can't... So you see, you get four moves you can do, and then you can attack. And I missed. So that's round one done. So this is turn base because you got rounds to do. Two points. There you go. Loot all. The so rat tails, we got 132 XP. onto the ship's lower deck. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you become aware of a hulking figure standing in the shadows. Memory, there you are. At last, growls a rough voice. Who's there? Show yourself. It's Roland. Where the tides have you been? Uh, below decks, planning our landing. Why? The island is in sight, but the damn guilders refuse to land. They want to turn back. Oh. If we turn back, we lose our shot of the girl. And no one gets paid. Listen here, I know our boys better than most. We've hired them to go to Idra and kill. If we don't pay them, things will go bad quickly. The sailors are bloody terrified. They claim something is hunting us. Alright, let's go. For all the good it will it will do. Wait, there are a few sailors up ahead. Rattled as a pair of rabbits. Uh, is there a way past them? There are two doors ahead. Take the left, and we should be able to sneak past them without any trouble. Alright. Anything else I should know? Just get off this bloody boat. You and Roland begin making your way towards the commotion on deck. Press Q or the character portrait to swap the party leader. One. All right. So the left door. This is where they teach you about um, being in the shadows and whatnot and stealthy. So there's the sailors there. So we can just go right up this way. Bypass them. You emerge onto the deck and see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn. 
ship shakes violently in the grip of a storm as lightning tears across the sky. Amidst the din of the storm and their frantic arguments, you bellow for the attention of the assembled crewmen and mercenaries. Both the ship's captain and the leader of the mercenaries you hired, a coarse thug of a man named Estavo, turn their attention to you. They look ready to use the unsheathed weapons in their hands at the slightest provocation. Rest the ship's captain. You direct your attention to the ship's captain. You know him to be a reasonable, but suggestible man. At present, his usually placid eyes are wild with panic or anger. Um, I paid you for passage to the shore, did I not? Captain lowers his weapon and speaks earnestly. The, cost, the coast of Idra is cursed. We've heard tales and assumed them grog-drenched rumors only. But there is something between us and the shore that will drag us all to a watery grave. Uh, what are you talking about? What have you seen? Not but glimpses. My men have seen the shadow of something deep in water stalking us. Nothing natural moves like that. Stavo glares murderously at the captain. You renege on our deal based on a glimpse? There's desperation in the captain's voice. We are seasoned sailors. We do not balk at shadows. You need to be alive to rescue this girl you speak of. Um, we're out of time. Sail us in or argue the point with Stavo. Stavo turns his steely gaze from you to the captain. Let me spell this out for you, sea dog. We contracted to rescue the girl, but if you don't get us out to the shore, we'll gut you for free. Mercenaries you hired all shift their weight in anticipation of making good on that promise. Captain, he's right. Do what you were hired to do. Something changes in the captain's expression. He stands tall. I will not order my ship and my men to certain doom. We shall not get any closer to the coast while I have command. Uh, well, we'll see verses 15. I guess we'll try it. I believe you, but my contract with these men does not mention your survival. Oh, success. You can see our, our roll over there. So we had to... Computer rolled an eight. I'm sorry, we rolled an eight. And the computer rolled a five. There you go. A few of the ship's crew lower their weapons. The captain's eyes flit between you and Estavo's murderous grin. He sheaths his blade and speaks softly, his voice barely audible over the snapping sails. So be it. May the deep have mercy. You gain 100 XP. Oh, and immediately... <laughs> immediately, uh... Wrecked by a freaking monster. Suddenly, huge monstrous tentacles burst from the water around the ship. For a split second before the terror sets in, you wonder what Nastava must be thinking as monstrosities loom over him. After reaching their full height, the tentacles curve inwards and smash into the ship. Some pierce straight through the deck, others snap the mast like they were matchstick. You stand frozen in place. Through a haze of splintered wood and panicked screams, you notice Roland. He throws himself out of the way of a tentacle, but begins to fall overboard as the ship lurches once more. Go to his aid. You dash towards the ship's fractured rail, dodging holes in the deck and wounded men, beseeching you for help. Roland hangs by one arm from the side of the ship. Try to grab him. You lunge for Roland's arm, but he loses his grip, and your fingers close only around thin air. You missed him by an inch. He falls wordlessly downwards. You watch as he is swallowed by the raging sea. The ship is listing fatally, and you see the great tentacles high above you, poised for the coup de grace. As you jump, you hear the terrible rending of wood giving in to flesh. The impact of the water winds you, the waves pummel you down, the currents beseech you to go deeper, ever deeper. Peaceful black. Think. <laughs> there we go. And the Bar Baron Estate. I challenge you to read that there, but that's what that says, the Baron Estates. Like I said, the, the fonts in this game, I'm not sure what to, like, even just the normal reading font is a little bit rough, especially with some of the lettering. And, you know, I don't have any kind of dyslexia or anything like that, but if someone did and they were trying to play this game, I, you know, the fact that I'm struggling with it, I can't imagine how badly they'll struggle with it. So I, 
the one piece of feedback I would give is uh, either the text needs to be bigger or you need a font that is more legible at a smaller size because it's really rough here. Really, really rough. Uh, especially if you're expecting people to read and read carefully at times, even. Uh, the Villa of Lord Cato Baron, weeks earlier. An aging, armored man in the livery of House Baron stands and scowls at you. Eyes like coal peer out from a craggy face, fringed top and bottom with wild white hair. Return his challenging stare. The older man crosses his massive arms, steps forward, and leans towards you. So, young sellsword, come looking for a scrap, have you? Though his voice is full of gravel, there's now a glint in his eyes, as though the old coals have begun to warm up. Cadian, or... Cadian, 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 I guess? You old fool. A single bark of laughter emanates from the dense beard as he embraces you in a crushing bear hug. Cadian may, oh, may be older and grayer there's no B there uh, but from the force of his hug you don't reckon you'd have any more chance of beating him now than you did as a 12 year old uh, it's good to see some things haven't changed Gideon steps back and allows you to breathe again before grabbing you by the shoulders we heard of your father's passing truly he sits with a golden dead now tell me how did he die uh, in glorious battle at my side Gideon's eyes narrow. And the old warrior died a fitting death. Gideon is quiet for a moment, then breaks into a grin. We'll raise a cup to his name, together, you and I. As soon as you're done with Kato, and I can rustle up some ale fit for a quest. Gideon, why am I here? Master Kato will chew your ear plenty when you see him, Emery. Lyra, the new master at arms, awaits you by the main entrance. She'll escort you, and don't ask her not to. If you think I had a temper... The joke fa fails to hide the note of anxiety in the grizzled house guard's voice. Uh, diplomacy 15 plus, huh? What are you hiding from me, old old bear? Oop, failure. I got 14. I won't betray my master's confidence by saying more. Best you see him yourself. Man offers a smile, but it fails to iron out the concern creases around his eyes. Very well, I'll go look for the master's arm. If you want to explore for old time's sake, take this lantern. Kato will wait, and we don't want you getting lost in the hedge maze again. The man laughs heartily and hands you a small brass lantern. Activate or deactivate lanterns by pressing T. Whatever may come to pass, it did this old warrior a barrel of good to see you again, boy. The old man slaps you on the shoulder in, in parting, almost knocking you off balance. So, um, as they've hinted to here... Yes, I can go over into Hedge Maze and have a flashback. Uh, I'm not going to do that because, again, I want to show you as much of the game as I can. And it's, you know, as with any RPG, it can be pretty uh, pretty wordy at the, at the very beginning. Uh, the dog sniffs at you expectantly. Pet the dog. Happily wags his tail as you pet it. But yes, you can pet the dog in this game. A woman stands before the main entrance to the villa. Her posture speaks of a graceful, coiled power, that of a dueling ace. No doubt she is the new master at arms for House Baron. As you approach, she offers a quick, neat bow, just low enough to be respectful. Greetings, memory. Master Kato welcomes you back to House Baron. He awaits you in his offices, but he graciously gives you leave to tour the grounds of the estate before meeting with him. He seemed to think you would want to. Uh, yeah, let's just get this over with. Very well. If it pleases you, the master is in his office just ahead. Yes, I remember the way. I suppose you do, but I'll escort you nonetheless. The flicker of a smile plays across her face, and she beckons for you to lead the way. The opulence has faded. The shadows longer. Clearly much has changed since the last time you were here. Uh, I didn't come here to reminisce. Yeah, let's, I want to. I want to get past this part. Um, blanking the doorway are two marble statues. The craftsmanship is stunning, but the sight of the two women depicted fills you with sadness. Go on your way. Reflecting pool here. 
Chateau Baron sits tall in a tasteful but modest reception room. He looks less imposing than you remember, and with a few more crow's feet. Nonetheless, he's lost none of his composure or air of casual authority. You take a seat across a formidable desk from him. The study, like the rest of the villa, is half-lit, giving a morose cast to its opulence. The older man's face creases into a tired but genuine smile, which momentarily lifts some of the room's oppressive mood. It's a mercy to see you again, your own man, and in your own prime, Atto says before a frown consumes his smile. It's just a shame our reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love, but perhaps together we can yet improve our collective circumstances. Though you know my father is dead. Atto leans forward, hands clasped beneath his chin. I shan't deny it. I was saddened to hear of his passing. Despite everything, I remember him fondly. Mm. No need to dwell on the past. Atto is caught, caught off guard for a moment before letting out a deep breath. When the years have bestowed you with wisdom, I am glad, for it is, has forsaken the House of Baron. Why have you called me here? Embla is missing. Atto's voice quivers momentarily, betraying his stoic features. Now I beg of you, memory, help me find my daughter. Help her return home, where she belongs. What's happened to her? Left without notice a week ago from the scant clues we had, we believe she boarded a ship bound for one of the outer isles, Idra. She went of her own free will. At the time, I thought little of it. Atto begins to glower. Since then, however, there have been reports. Brave one. Reports? No one and no word has left Idra in days. Rumor has it even the Imperial, au Imperial augurs are in the dark. I know not how this touches the fate of my daughter, but she must be re returned to me, one way or another. Any idea why she left? Something has been building in her for years, an aptitude of sorts. I suspect you already knew. In any case, it's grown much stronger lately and drives her in ways I cannot understand. I suspect she's looking for... answers. Um, but why Idra? Why indeed? There is little on the island save the port of Harun. If Idra was her destination, she must have landed there. Uh, Harun? Yes, an old imperial port and home to a few hundred whalers, traders, and the occasional smuggler. We can only speculate as to what drew her there, but it's our only lead. But how can I help her? Hire mercenaries, travel to Idra, and begin your search in the port of Harun. From there, I trust you to do what needs to be done. Spare no cost. Just bring back my daughter. Mercenaries? Yes, if nothing else, the port will be dangerous enough. I recommend you begin by seeking out Roland Grey Eye, a crude but effective sellsword that I've made good use of before. Roland Grey Eye? The man is a grizzled veteran. He may have st slowed with age, but his experience and reliability more than make up for it. He's also much respected by similar men, and so will be instrumental in hiring a reliable crew. I'll take it into consideration. Edo shows you his upturned palms, beseeching. I know this thing I ask of you is fraught with danger. This is your chance at improving your fortune, materially and in honor. What say you? Um, I accept for Embla's sake. Edo smiles softly, visibly relieved, and for a moment he looks like the man you remember. Have you any final questions or matters to discuss? Time is, as I'm sure you appreciate, of the essence. Let's just get on with it. Atto stands with poorly concealed effort. In memory, you stand and meet his gaze. Return her to me. There's no other outcome of this affair. Um, you have my word, Kato. You're awoken, you're awoken by the cacophonous cries of gulls circling you. Your body is a mess of pain and exhaustion, covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes. Slowly you drag yourself from the cold water onto the relative safety of solid rock. Moments or hours pass as you lie still, trying desperately to will some warmth, warmth back into your body. Finally, you manage to force your eyes open. By some miracle, you are not only alive, but you find yourself on the shores of the cursed island of Idra. Thrown around you is the wreckage of the Zephyr. You see no other survivors. Nonetheless, the goal ahead of you is clear. You must venture to rescue your childhood friend from whatever fate has befallen her. Though unless you can find equipment and a companion soon, you may have cheated death in vain. Venture forth. 
Right. So, first thing you see when you come onto this thing is a lighthouse. Don't go to a lighthouse. Not yet. <laughs> I found out the hard way there are enemies there that will just wreck your face until you get some equipment, which you have none right now. Broken bodies and debris line the rocky shores of Idra. In the distance, you can see what remains of the Zephyr's Hole. Okay. Uh, let me look at my inventory. Do I have anything? I have a... Club. I don't have to work for now. A stench of rotting flesh fills your nostrils. Ahead of you, grotesquely misshapen and crustacean horrors feast greedily on the corpses of the dead crew of the Zephyr. Hostiles are not spotted the party yet. Plus 15 bonus to stealth. Alright, so I can hit enter and I will first stack, but. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, I have just enough space to get over there to them. Battle erupts. Alright. Charge. There we go. Bam. Alright, 82 XP and some chitin. There we go. Corpse of a sailor, and now there's an examine over here. Corpses litter the ground. Tragically, these sailors appear to have made it to shore only to be brutally murdered. Hard wounds and gruesome dismemberments tells you that this must have been the work of madmen. Or crustacean. There's a box there, and it's got some uh, tra uh, trail rations in it. So we'll get all of those. We'll need those when we make camp and stuff. And you'll see the resting system. I want to at least get far enough that you can see what it looks like the rest, because it's, it's interesting. The different play on how on how you normally do it. Uh. Oh, there we go small group of exhausted figures sit huddled around a small campfire. Recognize them immediately as a small group of survivors from the Zephyr. One of the men suddenly notices you and the men stumble to their feet, smiling at you and waving you over to their meager fire. Okay. A gaunt-faced man that looks like he spent more years at sea than ashore stands before you. You recall this was the Zephyr's first mate. You remember his crewmates calling him Snoy. He offers a smile that doesn't quite reach his eyes as you approach. Greet the man. I did not expect to see you alive, mercenary, but you stood for us on the Zephyr and you saved the lives of some of my men, so I'm glad you made it. Um, your crew uh, didn't deserve to be slaughtered. Nonetheless, it did us little good. I've never seen anything like that beast before. The way it tore the ship apart in this island, something is wrong here. What curse has befallen us? Uh, all I know is that we need to work together for you to survive. <sighs> Aye, there is no disagreeing with this. Though my men and I have not to offer save our fire and this here cabin we came across. There are beds inside if you require, but little else. There's one last thing, a favor I'd ask of you. Go on. If you come across any more of my men, tell them where to find me. Both I and the guild will thank you if you do. Snowy turns his back on you and joins his men around the fire. All right. Leave. We can go in here and uh, there's a chest with a pickaxe in it. I don't think I want that. Uh, there's another chest with a sling. I don't know that I want a sling either. Alright. And we'll, we'll get to like resting and stuff later. We don't need the rest at the moment. But right now I want to explore a little bit. What is this? A great monolith rises from the rugged landscape. Ancient and weathered, the stone must have stood here for centuries. Painted on it are crude spiral-shaped runes, and at the base of the monolith lies piles of eggshells, flowers, and fish bones. Examine closer. 
Make little of the symbols as you pick through the small pile of offerings. It occurs to you that these can't be more than a few weeks old. Okay. You see how like the fog of war works in the game and all that stuff. Let's see where everything's at. Oh, battle erupts. They are alert to me. This is missing. All right, Peyton, loot all and leave. They're, at least they are missing. A2 more XP. And a crate uh, full of stuff. So get all of that. All the stuff I had before, pretty much, I think. Uh, so here's the weapon 1 to 2 piercing. We'll take that. What is 1 to 3 blunt? Uh, we'll put our armor on. And good there. Let's see there. Alright, what else do we got? Oh, is it a survivor? Hiding along the cliffs is a lone surviving member of the Zephyr crew. Dead emperors! They killed them all! Stabbed the old ni uh, Nino right in the throat! We need to find somewhere to hide. Tell a sailor about the other survivors. Man thanks you profusely and hastily makes his way towards the cabin where his comrades are waiting. Good. Oop, alert it. Ooh, a crit. Nice. Laying ahead of you, like some gargantuan beach sea creature, are the smashed remains of the Zephyr. He's shuddered to think of the monstrosity that caused the demise of the once elegant ship. Okay. Also, an empty box. Oop, there we go. Alright, we've all that. And we've leveled up. Cool. So now we could buy some feats. And for each one, so there's like this uh, character points system. And uh, that allows you to pay for some of these feats. Like this one is 10 character points. And that's piercing weapons, critical hits. Now cause bleeding. Uh, fleet splitted is 10 points. You can click on your feet and your combat movement is increased by 1. Agility permanently increases agility by four. Stealthy is only five points. Permanently increases stealth by four. Um, but there's nothing else that costs five right now. So I think I'm just going to go with. Um, I'm go with expert and piercing. Right now, so we'll buy that. We'll exit, and then you can see what we got here. Backstab and all those things. So cool. Anything in this box? No. Alright, in we go. You emerge into the broken hull of the ship. Movement immediately catches your eyes. The grotesque, squirming mass of fur and glistening teeth tell you that you're not the only passenger in his effort to make it to the shore. Okay. Plus 15 bonus of stealth. Let's do it.
One thing I have noticed is that the AI will get a little bit confused and uh, kind of hover going back and forth when it can't actually get at you. Um, hopefully that's something they'll be able to be able to fix, but like it'll keep going back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down, when it's like when you're behind something that it can't get to you at from that angle. Three to five. I think I'll take that. Uh, jewelry that can be sold. And strong spirit might as well. There is weight limits and stuff you can see down here. My weight is 34 or 66 pounds, so I can't really loot everything, unfortunately. You have to be somewhat picky. Also, I gotta make sure I actually equip that. That would be swell. There we go. And then this is not just the soul, right? You don't equip it. Okay. Well, oh, erupts. All right, I'll let them them come to me. Or not. You can see also on the right, I haven't been using any, but you, there's like feet you can use and uh, you can defend, you can go into your inventory, all kinds of cast a spell if you have one. Oh, nice. This board is doing well. See how it's like moving them back and forth, back and forth constantly. Hopefully that's something that we'll be able to fix. Yeah. There we go. 677 XP. Loot all as we do, and look in this chest. Got some good stuff in there. Uh, I will take the armor, take the health potions too. That so. So let's look at our stuff here. Uh, armor is better all around. And uh, we are encumbered though, so let's go wrap this guy. Alright, now we're now we're good. What is this? There's oil for lighthouse week. Yes, I need this. So we'll get that. For the lighthouse. For when we get over there and talk to the keeper and all that stuff. And I'd like to at least do that. I know we're over our our time here, but I want to at least do that much. Before we do that though, let's stop off and show you what the resting looks like, because it's 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 different. Um, kind of, sort of. You'll see what I mean as we go in here. So we'll go in and we'll hit the bed. Alright, make camp. Alright, and then you have camp management. And in here, it's two hour time periods. So you can say you want to rest, you can put a character on watch, or you can go foraging. 
if you want. I think we just really want rest. So that's two, four, six. Uh, and then we'll do maybe forage and forage and see how that, how that works. Let's begin activities. Do two more rest. He's already fully rested. There we go. So we're good. Rations are at 100 percent Break camp. You guys kind of see how that how that works. It's 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 a nice uh, a nice twist on how you do the camp stuff. You know, normally you don't like have a schedule like that where you plan out every two hour blocks. It was kind of neat to see it in action. See how it's going. Leave the current area. Yes. We'll go down to the lighthouse. An ancient lighthouse rises steeply from the bluffs ahead of you. The beacon is still lit, though it flickers weakly. Oh wait, here's a guy over here. In the fog. One of the fortunate few sailors to survive the sinking of Zephyr is crafts like a frightened, frightened rabbit in the tall grass. Blessed dead, I thought you were another one of those cursed hounds. I was thinking I was the only one who made it. Hounds? Aye, bloody monsters they are. Look, look all diseased and rabbit. I was trying to make my way up to the lighthouse past the stairs just north of here, but there's a whole pack of them there. Might want to look for another route up there, unless you end up as dog shit. <laughs> uh, I should tell him that, uh, uh, the other survivors thanks you and he easily makes his way towards the thing. Okay. We're going to take the main road because we can. I think we can handle some, some rabbit dogs. There you go. Reps. Okay. Another one down. Boom. Three hound ears. And we've leveled up. Let's buy some feats. Ten character points. Uh, let's do increased agility. Since my character really likes agility. So we'll get four more just permanents. So we'll buy that. here. What is it? Well, a lantern. Cool, I can use that. And some health. Awesome. Entering into the heart of the tower, you round a corner and stop dead in your tracks. Rising up through the core of the tower is a grotesque-looking metallic monstrosity. The strangely organic shapes and odd geometry seem to writhe in the dim light, and the laden silver coating casts a ghostly reflection on the walls. For all its alienness, you still recognize the arcane machinery, an ancient imperial reticular node. You suspect this lighthouse was once fueled by reticular energy, and that this machine was part of the operation. Stillness and layer of dust, however, tell you that it's long since fallen into disrepair and that the lighthouse is likely now fueled by common oil. I happen to have. Go figure. Alright. Come through here. Let's go around here real fast. If there's anything else. Now we got some rations there. Take some the trail rations. Oh, but I am encumbered and can't move by doing that. That's unfortunate. Um... A one pound, really? 
Uh, I guess I'll just drop this board then. There we go. I'm not using it. Where's this lead? Oh, that leads outside. Okay. Explains that. Now up the stairs. Climb the narrow, creaking stairs towards the top of the lighthouse. You find the door barred from the inside and knock heavily. Moments later, you hear the bar lift. As you enter the lighthouse gallery, a haggard face peers out at you from the gloom. Moving closer, you see it belongs to an old man who clutches a makeshift sphere tightly to his chest. Somehow he looks both fearful, yet greatly relieved to see you. Mother of maelstroms, the man croaks. Who are ye then? Who did I summon? Come, sit. You must be wary. Sit, sit. Man gestures frantically to a battered chair in the corner. Um, I was shipwrecked here my, by something foul. There are all manner of beasts in the deep oceans of our world, but never have I seen anything like this. A horror from beyond the natural it was. I pulled down that ship. I saw it all from my tower, I did. Though I wish I did not have the bear such a sight. I can hardly believe that anyone could survive such a nightmare. Uh, it matters not. What happened here? Something foul is growing on Idra. A taint on the land. There are lights. Lights as you've never seen, like those sailors from the high north talk of, but the colors, like they bleed into your very dreams, if you can manage to sleep, that is. It got to the animals first, though, warped them in both mind and body, made them cruel and dangerous. Ain't never seen nothing like it. It's unnatural, I tell you. But worse still, Harun is dead as a tomb, was a right bedlam of cries and screams two days ago, then nothing, not as much as a lit candle at night. Only the deep itself knows the truth of these happenings, but I can tell you this. The island is doomed. The sea itself will rise to claim us. I need some information. Yes, anything you may ask. We're safe as can be here. The old man seems eager at the prospect of conversation. Um, uh, tell me about Harun. Harun went dark about the same time as the animals ran amok. There was smoke on the wind and screams too. I could swear it. Not like battle, or perhaps slaughter is more like it. I think there is a camp of sorts just north of town. Ragged tents and such. Survivors, perhaps? I thought about going there to see for myself, but I changed my mind. The old man hangs his head dejectedly, before continuing in a whisper. Stay for here, ending to the light. I have some other questions. Okay, uh, ask about work. Um, what can I do to help? This here beacon is all's keeping the horrors of this island from my throat. Thing is... Oil's running low, and I got nary a drop left in storage. I need you to find me some oil before darkness takes us. Perhaps there is some in the, in the wreckage of your ship. Matthias stares absent-mindedly into the fire. Uh, I was wondering about something else. At work. About that job. Uh, I have the oil. Hides, right, take me. I knew you could do it. All I have to offer in way of reward is my old sword. It once served me well, but it's getting too heavy for me now. Matthias produces an old but well-crafted broadsword wrapped in cloth. Party gained 200 XP. Glad to help. Um. All right. Time to leave. You're full to go. There's nothing beyond the light but despair. And but I'll be here waiting for here for you for when you return, as I must. Farewell. And then this lighthouse becomes a place where you can you can sleep and and other things. Um, but I wanted to at least get to this point so you could kind of really get a good idea of the story and where it's going and some of the mechanics and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, if it's not obvious, I'm really enjoying this. I enjoy like the nostalgia of it and everything else. Um, like I said, they kind of got to do something about the font. Everything else I could forgive. It's the font. You know, especially when you got to read a lot that is making it really difficult. Like I'm crossing my eyes, like, like no one's business trying to like squint to read some of it. It's just, it's, it's, um, I'm not sure what to do, what they can do there, whether it's make it a darker background, make the font bigger, pick a different font. I'm not sure what they can do there, but it something's got to give because it's, it's, it's a bit, uh, it's very difficult, and if you expect players to read stuff, you got to make it so that it's, you know, you're not straining yourself to read things. But, 
that's the only uh, like negative feedback I have. Everything else uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying about it. So uh, there you have it, my friends. That has been Skulled Against the Black Priory, uh, the prologue. And it's a free demo out on Steam right now as we speak. You can go download it for free and uh, take a look for yourself and go a little bit further than I went, perhaps. It is by Scrape It AS and published by Raw Fury and is scheduled for some sort of release, whether it's early access or full release, not sure, uh, this year. So there you have it, my friends. As always, I will leave links down in the description so you can do your own due diligence. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you 